Very warm welcome to all of you uh, to the third edition of Conquest. Uh, this is a third year uh, here in Christ. Um, and uh, the day today would also have the regional finals of the Southern Regional Finals, followed by the grand finale. So this is our last leg of the Conquest journey this year. Um, so welcome all of you and uh, wishing you guys the very best. I think we'll start out with the preliminary round and I'll go over the rules to all of you and we'll be ready to go. So Conquest is presented to you by the Center for Law and Policy Research and uh, I'd urge all of you to do one thing, uh, do go and check out their CAD website. Uh, I think they've done stupendous work in terms of digitizing the constant assembly debates and a variety of you know, articles and uh, a whole lot of events to kind of bring the constitution closer to uh, you know, uh, the civic society. So I would urge all of you to go and explore the CAD website. It's supported by the Frederick Norman Foundation. A huge round of applause for the Frederick Norman Foundation and uh, Mr. Arvind Dattar, the Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, for supporting us with the initiative. The, our digital partner for Conquest this year is The Print. Uh, so they've been covering uh, Conquest through different regionals uh, on their platform. Uh, and a huge round of applause for Christ School of Law uh, for their undeterred support for the last three years continuing. And uh, yes, and uh, the knowledge partners for today is our organization, Walnut Knowledge Solutions. We work with a variety of clients to use uh, interesting questions and stories to bring about engagement. We work primarily with school students here in Bangalore, Delhi, and Chennai. Uh, so that's about us. And wishing you all the very best for the preliminary round. We'll jump right away to the rules. So 20 question preliminary round at Conquest this year. Five star marked questions. Questions number 11 to 15 will be star marked and they will be used as for breaking ties. Uh, please switch off all electronic devices, and I mean electronic devices of every sort. In fact, we got to know of a new mechanism that some people are using, which is essentially smart watches, and which helps them kind of uh, crack the quiz. So let's not take any unfair means. All our volunteers are around, and in any one of you uh, are using a smartwatch or any of smart devices, uh, let's use the smarts in your brain to work out answers, right? And let's play it fair. So please switch off all electronic devices at the course of the preliminary round. I mean, switch off and please put it into your bag. Not even silent. If any of you are even seeing it, we'll be presuming that you'll be copying. So just uh, let's be out of these smart devices for the next half an hour or so, right? No negative marking. So the, the objective of the quiz is for you to think, question, and to work out answers. So therefore, there's no negative marking. So as much as possible, try to work out answers, make educated guesses. Uh, most questions are crafted in a way that will help you work out answers. Please stick the relevant category in your answer sheet, whether you're a mixed team or an all-girls team. So kindly, please ensure that you do not miss that as part of your answer sheet, because that's very important. There is uh, there's a, a category for one uh, mixed team in the final. Uh, and one slot in final is reserved for a team for bo both women teams or a mixed uh, team. Right? So that's more or less. And the other very important rule is that there is a cap of two teams per institution to get qualified for the finals. Right? So there is competition amongst teams from the same college. So kindly ensure that you guys don't collude. Keep yourselves uh, you know that your team members from the same college are also competitors in the quiz, right? Okay, with that being our preliminary round rules, we are ready to roll with our preliminary round. Wishing you guys all the very best. The first question of the preliminary round of Conquest Southern Regional Round on the screen now. Whose statue will be the first Kannadiga statue approved to be in the vicinity of the British Parliament on the banks of River Thames in the London Borough of Lambeth. The person whose statue is being installed shares a conceptual relationship with Britain because he preached British values of democracy, freedom of speech, equality of opportunity and tolerance way back in the 12th century. 
I mean, people might argue whether it's British values or Indian values. The other Indian leader statues that have been approved and installed in London are that of Mahatma Gandhi Ji, Jawaharlal Nehru and Rabindranath Tagore. I mean, this would not help you much, but this is where the statue of this person would be, right? In the vicinity of the British Parliament, you will have the first Kannadiga statue. And this person, way back in the 12th century, spoke of democratic values, freedom of speech, equality of opportunity, and tolerance. So Conquest is a quiz which deals with politics, history, constitution, so on. So this person has been in the center of a, should I say, a sort of a burning political issue a couple of months back. Right. That's question number one. Question number two. Which essential and obvious democratic right, which was not so obvious for a very long time, was first granted to a particular group in the year 1893 in New Zealand, and as of now, the latest country to officially provide this right to its people was Saudi Arabia in the December of 2015. Which particular right are we talking about? So the first was granted in 1893 in New Zealand. And as of now, the latest country to officially provide this right to its people was Saudi Arabia in the December of 2015. And to get this right, there has been a whole lot of activists who've played a huge role. So a certain right which we take for granted today has come about by a lot of activism and it came about first in 1893 in New Zealand and a couple of, quite a few years later in many other countries. And Saudi Arabia was one of the latest in 2015 to recognize this right. Right, that's question number two. Question number three. So here is an excerpt from Dr. Ambedkar's speech in the Constituent Assembly. I'm very glad that the majority of those who spoke on this article have realized the importance and the significance of this article. If I was asked to name any particular article in this constitution as the most important, an article without which this constitution would be a nullity, I would not refer to any other article except this one. It is the very soul of the constitution, the very heart of it, and I'm glad that the house has realized its importance. What is he referring to in the above paragraph? According to Dr. Ambedkar, this was the very heart and soul of the constitution. Either tell us the article or tell us broadly the concept and get your points. That's question number three. Question number four. So after his service, this person served, this gentleman served as an independent director on multiple boards of 14 companies and a chairman of six he was known for his extreme wit and desire to avoid political correctness. Once, when he was replaced on the board of a company by a man named Nayak at the behest of the government, he quipped. This is the first time in history when a Nayak has replaced a dash dash. He died of complications from pneumonia at the age of 94 in 2008. Reportedly, his last words were, I am okay. Identify this Padma Vibhushan awardee who is known for us for an entirely different reasons. So somebody who had, I mean, famous for his tongue-in-cheek replies, who believed in uh, quite a bit of no-nonsense, and kind of used the clue there, first time in history where a Nayak is being replaced by a dash dash, and try to work out this question. That's question number four, identify this Padma Vibhushan awardee and also kind of like think of, you know, after his service, he was like, I mean, as an independent director in a couple of companies, chairman of six. Okay, that's question number four, question number five. According to legend, the name of this place is derived from a word that means land of three lingas or simply from a word that meant three lingas. It is believed that Lord Shiva descended on the three mountains of Kalishwaram, Sri Sailam, and Draksharama in the linga form. The land between the three temples where these three lingas 
became known as the land of three lingas from which the modern name follows. Give the modern name. So again, you might be wondering, there is a certain context for why this question is being asked. Make an intelligent guess of why would this quiz master ask about you know, land of the three lingas. So try to kind of make some guesses of certain places and why should it come in a history, politics, constitution quiz, things like that. This place was a matter of controversy even right after the independence and, and very, uh, and fairly recently it has found its day, sort of thing. Yeah. That's question number five. Question number six. In 2018, opposition parties submitted a petition seeking the impeachment of Chief Justice of India, Deepak Mishra, to the Vice President Venkai and Naidu with signatories from 71 parliamentarians. The audio clip contains the opinion of a famous jurist regarding the impeachment motion. He was, I mean, obviously you can see the audio clip and kind of identify that he was not for it. Let's play the audio clip. Uh, the Chief Justice of India is also subject to some laws and some criticism. But that must be a very valid criticism and must be founded on very solid evidence. I don't think that any such material exists with those who are trying to attack the judiciary. And the attack on the judiciary today is absolutely one-sided and is based upon total ignorance of the legal position. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, judges of the Supreme Court of India are not subject to this kind of stupid procedures that are being followed to. Okay, right? So you heard the audio clip. So obviously, like, I mean, you could see that the gentleman is quite old. In fact, in many ways, I believe this person became a lawyer at a very, very young age, where there's an, actually an exception that was made for this person to enter the bar. Which famous lawyer did you hear there? That's question number six. Question number seven. This document was written by Abdul Fazl as a third volume of a famous chronicle written around 1590. The name of the document literally means Constitution of the Great. Which particular document are we talking about? The original version of it is housed in the Haz Hazar Duari Palace in West Bengal. The famous document, book, written by Abdul Fazl. The, doc the name of the document literally translates to the Constitution of the Great. That's question number seven. Question 8. A certain X, a term, is a meeting of supporters or members of a specific political party or movement. The term originated in the United States. Lewis Carroll mocked the futility of this X in A X race and a long tale, chapter 3 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, when the X race of running in a circle stops. Everyone is declared a winner by the dodo and Alice is told to hand out prizes to all others, receiving her own thimble as her prize. What is X? A term, specific, uh, it's a meeting of supporters or members of a specific political party or movement, a term which originated in the United States. You can see how this was also referenced in the Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, where it says X race, where effectively everyone was awarded and so on. What term are we talking about? Question number eight. Question nine. So about the case itself, H.M. Siravai had later commented the four judgments were delivered in the darkest hour of India's history after independence 
and they made the darkness complete. About an individual involved, the New York Times on April 30th, 1979 stated, if India ever finds its way back to the freedom and democracy that were proud hallmarks of its 18 years as an independent nation, someone will surely erect a monument to dash of the Supreme Court. Kushman Singh also spoke of him thus, so clean a man that he makes angels look disheveled and dirty. Who was this individual? And in many ways, I think the invocation of this person today is quite fitting with the recent developments. It's an offhand clue, but if you can think of how or who we are talking about, then it fits the bill. Right? So very famously, the New York Times kind of applauded the courage of this person, said that one day, surely, question nine. So you can see H.M. Sirva is talking about a certain case here where this individual was involved. Says it was one of the darkest hours of India's history. Yes, that's question nine. Question 10. It is said to have been invented at the Madras Club in the 19th century by Colonel Kenny Herbert and is said to be related to Rasam. In fact, to emphasize on its colonial connections, a 1784 Navy limerick is often quoted. In vain our hard fate we repine, in vain our fortune we rail. On dash we dine, or congi in Bangalore jail, as well as a sentence from an 1893 book on missions in Madras by Reverend Hould, who went on to say, in a brazen pot was dash, a hot vegetable soup made chiefly from peppers and capsicums. What is being talked about above? So these are references to a certain thing which related to rasam. You can see the references in a limerick there, followed by another mention of it in the missions of Madras by Reverend Hool. What are we talking about? It says a hot vegetable soup made chiefly from peppers and capsicums. I mean, you will also get this particular food item even today in some menus of old cafes, etc. It's question 10. Question 11. Okay, these are your star mark questions. Well, the phrase concept X found mention in earlier Supreme Court judgments. It was first prominently introduced by Justice Mudholkar in the Sajjan Singh case. He had himself borrowed the phrase from a Pakistan Supreme Court decision in Pazlul Kadar Chaudhary versus Muhammad Abdul Haq in what was probably the first instance of jurisprudential borrowing made between the two neighboring countries. The term X has since become a go-to term for constitutional courts and legal experts while discussing the constitutionality or testing the constitutional validity of any legislation. What is the term X? So Justice Mudolkar is supposed to have first prominently introduced this term in the Sajjan Singh case, but of course this term became much famous later and used in the Pakistani case that is mentioned there. But what you have to rely most on is the fact that it's now a go-to term for constitutional courts and legal experts while discussing constitutionality or testing the constitutional validity of any legislation, right? In many ways, people also remark that this is a term which in some way even saved democracy in our country. What term are we talking about? That's question number 11. Question 12. Bhagat Singh in late 1920s brought out a pamphlet bearing the poem of Robert Browning titled The Lost Leader, some of whose lines are as follows. Just for a handful of silver, he left us. We shall march prospering not through his presence. Songs may inspire us, not from his lyre. Blot out his name, then record one lost soul more. The poem was originally directed towards Wordsworth for turning against liberty. 
Bhagat Singh took out this pamphlet with a photo of a particular leader, which this poem was aimed at, printed on the front of the pamphlet. Who was this leader? Right? So there are clues in the question. So Bhagat Singh used this poem to make a reference to a famous leader. Do you have a doubt? Give me one. Or rather the most famous leader. It's question number 12. Question number 13. So this is an image from the Chadag area in Galway, Ireland. The tiny windows that you see here were a consequence of the British penal laws that placed a tax on window light. Therefore, these small windows were traditional to Irish rural households then. This tax was also the origin of a two-word term that's figuratively known to signify an unfair transaction or trade. What term is this? So, in fact, a term which we use quite... Uh, I mean, we use it in English language. It owes its origin to these small windows that most houses in Ireland used to have, mainly because there used to be taxes for... placed a tax on window light. So if it's an unfair transaction, trade, what term is this that owes its origin to an unfair tax by the British on window light. Question 13. Question 14. Known as Andhra Kesari, a lion of Andhra, he played a prominent role in the Indian freedom struggle and became the first chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. He was also one of the founding members of the Kizan Mazdoor Praja Party. A district in Andhra Pradesh is named after him as well. Actually, we've tried to show you the district in Andhra. Identify the gentleman. Lion of Andhra, the first chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. A district in Andhra Pradesh is also named after the gentleman. We've shown you the district. Tell us... Who this gentleman is? It's question 14. Question 15. Based on the Swan Singh Committee recommendations, the government promulgated the 42nd Constitutional Amendment, which inter alia introduced the fundamental duties to the Constitution. It is important to note that though all the recommended fundamental duties weren't adopted in the 42nd Constitutional Amendment, and a certain suggested provision was left out. Recently, the Prime Minister referred to Punya accruing to a certain set of people as a consequence of performing the specific act, which was referred to in the fun uh, fundamental duties, but was omitted later. What was the subject matter of the omitted provision in the suggested fundamental duties? Or tell us who the PM was referring to above. Right. So, uh, let me give you a clue. I mean, he was talking about a certain punya accruing if you performed a certain duty. And I'll just say it has an economic consequence. So think of what specific duty got left out, but was made reference to by the Prime Minister. Right? Question 15. Question 16. So during the framing of India's constitution, while the Constituent Assembly was debating the need for conferring criminal jurisdiction to the Supreme Court, some members of the Assembly expressed their views on a certain concept. Shibil Lal Saxena drew from his personal experience of being imprisoned during the Quit India movement in 1942 and was not in favour of it. Dr. P. K. Sen invoked the example of Western countries that have abolished it he pointed out that Britain's history with it was tardy. He cautioned that India should not follow Britain's precedent. Ambedkar wanted to abolish it as well. He argued that the ancient tradition of non-violence must be regarded as a moral mandate. What concept was being discussed? So in the constant assembly debates, when the discussion was on the, what should be the criminal jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and so on. Shibin Lal Saxena had to say this, wherein because of his personal experience of, of what he saw in the prison during 
while he was imprisoned due to his activities in the Quit India movement, was not in favor of something. Dr. P.K. Sen invoked the example of Western countries and how Britain has had a complex history with it. And he cautioned India not to follow the British president. Dr. Ambedkar relied on ancient tradition of non-violence must be regarded as a ma moral mandate. And that kind of alluded to his views on the particular concept. What concept was being discussed? Again here, make an educated guess of what this could be. It's question 16. Question 17. So Sujata was the pseudonym of the Tamil author S. Rangarajan, author of over 100 novels, 250 short stories, 10 books on science, 10 stage plays, and a slim volume of poems. He was one of the most popular authors in Tamil literature and a regular contributor to uh, topical columns in Tamil periodicals such as Ananda Vikatam, Kumudam, and Kalki. An engineer by profession, under his supervision, a Bangalore-based PSU designed and manufactured a product which has been in use across the country for more than a decade. However, the Aam Admi has come to question its credibility in recent times. What is the product talked about here? So, S. Rangarajan, famous author, also happened to be an engineer by profession and worked at a Bangalore-based PSU where they designed and manufactured a certain product which has been used for the last 10 years or so. However, the Aam Admi has come to question its credibility in recent times. What is the product talked about here? It's question 17. Question 18. Identify this prisoner of war from the Vietnam War. It's a video. Let's play the video. Kill the last one at 23. In which circumstances have you been shot down? I was on a flight over the city of Hanoi, and I was bombing, and was uh, hit by either missile or any aircraft fire, I'm not sure which, and the plane continued straight down, and I ejected and broke my leg and both arms, and went into a lake parachuted into a lake and I was picked up by some North Vietnamese and taken to the hospital where I almost died. I would just like to tell my wife I don't get well. Lover. I hope to see her soon. Right? Identify this rather famous prisoner of war from the Vietnam War. Name is important, yeah. Yeah? I mean, I would look giving you half points in finals, but not in like I mean, we require you to like kind of know the name of this person. Again, been in the news. So guys, most of these questions and answers are something that you all know. It's just that we've probably twisted it and probably asking you in different forms. All of things that you have heard of. Right? This is question 18 yeah. and question 19. The usual ad slots on a certain media sold for rupees 500 to rupees 1500 per 10 seconds. But a 10 second slot, ad slot during a particular show, which started in 2014, suddenly started costing rupees 2 lakhs. Which show? Again, work this out. Before, usually, the ad slots used to cost 500 to rupees 1500 on a certain media. And after 2014, for ad slots between a certain show, it started costing 2 lakhs for 10 seconds. Which show are we talking about? Right? That's question 19.
last question of the preliminary round. So in 2017, a 46 year old association came to an end and the new ones were supposedly lighter and imported from Germany. It took almost 40 days to obtain one that fit the bill after the old ones were regarded as being heavy and uncomfortable. However, in August of this year, it was considered fitting to bring back the old ones in a rather solemn atmosphere. What are we describing here? So, a certain association was 46 year old. It was lighter and imported from Germany. It took almost 40 days to obtain one that fit the bill after old ones were regarded as being heavy and uncomfortable. However, in August of this year, it was considered fitting to bring back the old ones in a rather solemn atmosphere. What are we talking about or give us one key word that we are looking at towards, fine, as long as you kind of get an idea of what we are talking about here. And why should it even appear in a politics history quiz? Think about it. Imported from Germany, it's lighter, usually was black in color, almost a signature style, I say. Yeah, that's question 20. And if you have any other answers that you have to fill up and things like that, please do so, right? So use a keyword, description, names, that would do. That concludes our preliminary round. I'll give you last 10 seconds to make your final last minute answers and fill up all your details. Kindly ensure that you have ticked each of your categories correctly. Right? So, some teams, I'm just going to hover around some questions which some people wanted to see. Right? Okay. So, can I have all the volunteers please collect the answer sheet? So right after the preliminary round, give us 10 minutes, we will discuss the answers of the preliminary round and we'll follow it up with the regional finals. We'll have the results of the regional finals ready by then. ...with the preliminary round discussion. I'll try to go to different parts of the auditorium so that is, everyone gets a chance to answer. Here goes the first question. Right. So, okay, guys, wait for... The answer, like, I mean, I would rather ask uh, people. So, right at the back, what do you think the answer for this is? Basavarna is correct. So, Basavarna. So, Basveshwara, Basavarna finds mention today as a statue. Basavarna, Basveshwara, I would have, we, would have, we would have get your points. Uh, as a statue in uh, Lambeth, in the, on the banks of the River Thames, in the vicinity of the British Parliament. Right? And the Lingayat issue and so on. So that was the reason why I mix relevance. Right? Okay. What is this? A right which was first recognized. I think I'll go to the... Yes? Oh, to the side. Yeah. Let's give the finalists. Uh, you guys have your day uh, in the, on the stage after the grand finale. Yes? Women's suffrage or women's right to vote is the correct answer. Very good. So... Good answer there. It was first recognized the particular group in New Zealand, right? And later, the latest was Saudi Arabia was recognized the women's right to vote. So, good answer. Yeah. No. Very important. Right to vote was ex existed prior. It was women's right to vote or women's suffrage, which is important there, right? No, not right to vote. Right to vote would not cut it. It should say women's right to vote, women's suffrage. Huh? Not universal adult suffrage and that's right to vote. Right? It's not universal right to suffrage. If it's, yeah, if it's right, if you said women's right to vote in some form in your answers, we will give you because it should say women's right to vote there. Right? So that's the answer we were looking for. Third, what is the... Referring to, according to, okay, actually we'll go to the balcony uh, uh, above for this. Yeah, okay guys, according to Dr. Ambedkar, this article was the heart and soul of the constitution, yes? 32 is correct and the right 
constitutional remedies. So all the rights will be here, but unless and until there is a provision through which you can get a remedy for any of your uh, infringement of fundamental rights, there's absolutely no use. So that's Article 32 and the right to constitutional remedies. Good answer there. So keep it up. Okay, next question. Yes, I think this again, uh, can anyone, any Nayaks here <laughs> by any chance? <laughs> oh, okay. So here is a, a Nayak anyway. So here, what do you think is the answer here? Sam Manek Shaw. And the Nayak gets it right. So this is Sam Manek Shaw, Field Marshal. So this is the first time in the history when he says when a Nayak has replaced a Field Marshal. But as you know, a Nayak happens to be a corporal uh, in the army, the junior most ranks in the army. So that's how he said it. So very good answer there. Sam Manek Shaw is the answer we were looking for. So Field Marshal Sam Manek Shaw, who in many ways led the army during the Brit Bangladesh war and so on. Right, so the next question. Yeah, the three lingas, uh, a place that I said has been a matter of controversy right after the independence. And then I said, fairly recently, it saw the light of its day. So what particular place which gets its name from a word which means three lingas? Anyone at the back? Yes? Okay, wait, wait. So yeah, right there. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah, yourself. Telangana is the right answer. So try, like I mean, Telangana comes from Trilinga. Right? So, Telangana is the right answer. Good answer there. I think a good round of applause for the answer there. This is Telangana. And Telangana was an issue even after the independence. And of course, they saw it becoming, becoming a, a new state a couple of years back. Okay? So, you guys heard the audio clip. So, which famous... I was about to give a clue, which is almost to say that name is an invocation of a god's name and probably a fitting god's name considering the times in which we are presently, like considering the last few days when there is a volley of interesting Supreme Court judgments, right? So somebody says who? So I think, yeah, give it up. So yeah, who is this person speaking here? So this is, the, yeah, the famous criminal lawyer and famous lawyer. Ram Jait Malani, so is I think around 96, but I think the man shows so much more at this one. So Ram Jait Malani, right? So that's the answer we were looking for. Okay, yes. So this Constitution of the Great, uh, that's the document written by Abdul Fazl. It literally translates to this. What are we talking about? Yes, you want to give it a shot? Any Akbari. Any Akbari or Akbar Nama, I'll give it to you. So good answer there. In Akbari or if you have written Akbar Nama, we have, we'll probably uh, we'll give you points. Akbar Nama or Ena Akbari, right? So Akbar the Great, right? So Akbar comes, he itself means great there. Okay, next. Okay, what term? A meeting of Okay, caucus is the right answer. So caucus is the answer we were looking for. So whenever before the primaries and so on, you have a caucus to identify it. So this is a meeting. Uh, caucus is what we were looking for. All right, next question. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, up. I'll go to the balcony for this. Answer for this. So New York Times said of the courage of this person showed that one day a monument will be in front of the Supreme Court honoring this gentleman. Who are we talking about? Who, even Kushwan Singh went on to say something as flattering as, so clean a man that he makes angels look disheveled and dirty. And I also gave a clue saying that, I think noting this person now is of a certain value, right? Uh, considering recent developments of sort, who are we talking about? And he says the darkest hour in India's history, a particular case which was the darkest hour of Indian history. I would like to get an answer from up. Yeah, anyone, any guesses? Somebody is, yeah? 
HR Kanna is the right answer. Very good answer there. If you can stand up. Right? Good answer there. This is Justice HR Kanna, who was the sole dissenting voice in the ADM Jabalpu case or the habeas corpus case. And of course, I was referring to a dissenting opinion in the recent Ada judgment by D.Y. Chandrachut, which will again, it's time will say what view actually is a, as a country we would follow. But yes, this is Justice uh, H.R. Kanna. Next question. Right, so this is a soup we were talking about, which has reference in colonial uh, limericks and so on. Right, a spicy soup of which said to be related to rasam, uh, chiefly with peppers and capsicums and so on. So a little bit of a tongue twister. So which soup are we talking about? Who says that? Muligatoni is the right answer. So muligatoni soup is what we were looking for. So how many cracked this muligatoni? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the name itself is a little bit of a twister. So we'll be okay with muligatoni soup, right? Good answer there. Quite a popular soup during the colonial officers, British officers' times, right? Next, okay, okay. Again, this I go up for this. A certain word, a term that was first used in a in a Supreme Court judgment of the of Pakistan later borrowed into Indian context, just as Mudolkar was the first person to use this term in Sajan Singh case, and it became a much more of a go-to term for testing the constitutionality of any specific thing. What are we talking about? Basic structure is the right answer. Good. So basic structure doctrine, the basic structure of the Indian constitution, which is laid in the uh, Keshananda Bharati's case and so on. The basic structure, good answer there. So I think a good round of applause for that. So most of you got it. Right. So this is a poem by Robert Browning talking about a certain lost leader. So Bhagat Singh is supposed to have written this poem in relation to, I mean, printed this poem at the back of a certain uh, pamphlet of a certain leader. So what leader are we talking about? Who, yes, Lala Lajpat Rai is the right answer. So Lala Lajpat Rai, right, like, I mean, protesting the Simon Commission and so on. So this is Lala Lajpat Rai, good answer there. So Lala Lajpat Rai, next. Okay, this I think deserves a prize, right? So, so the British had some crazy laws, right? Like, and one of the laws was also to tax window light. So therefore, many Irish houses happen to have small windows, right? So a certain word came about, a two-word term or a word that we usually use in the English language, which refers to an unfair uh, transaction trade, which gets its origin due to this practice of taxing window light. So try to think of what this could be in, like, I mean, like intuitively, what is the first thing that you'd come out? Like if somebody actually taxed you for day, like, you know, of light, etc. think about it. Okay. Uh, I'll probably try to, yes. Window dressing, not quite. Yes. Daylight robbery is the right answer. I think a good answer there and a good round of applause and you guys get a, a, a nice jute bag from Center for Law and Policy Research. Keep it up. So this is daylight robbery. So if you're wondering how the term daylight robbery came about, this was attributed to the, the British law of actually taxing uh, you know, daylight, right? Window light. So that's how, and it was more or less a daylight robbery. Okay, the lion of Andhra and a district in Andhra Pradesh is named after this gentleman, right? So who are we talking about? Who went on to be the first chief minister of Andhra Pradesh also? So this is a southern regional round and we have participants from across the southern region, right? So that is why the questions you would note is also try to be reflective from different regions. 
Right? So who are we talking about? Rajasimha. Not Rajasimha. Okay. Uh, yes. Prakasam district. Prakasam is what we are looking for. After whom the Prakasam district in Andhra Pradesh is named after. So Prakasam is a good answer there. Keep it up. Right? Next question. Okay. So the question was that there was one specific provision of the fundamental duties was proposed but was not included in the final draft of the fundamental duties. Recently, the Prime Minister in one of his speeches makes a reference to it and he happens to say, if you do this duty, punya will accrue on you. And I said, it has an economic consequence. What duty are we talking about was the question. Right? So, anyone in the top, make an educated guess of what this duty could be. Right, and somebody says something from the top, okay, right, so somebody from here, if I have, yeah, why don't you give an answer? Paying of taxes, yes, something which is very close to our Prime Minister's heart, paying of taxes. So he says, paying of taxes, a duty which is very important, so that was a fundamental duty under the fundamental duties uh, provisions. But of course, it was not included later. So this is the fundamental duties. So I mean, you th thought of economic consequence and you look at duties and that should strike you at the first. And this is a duty to pay taxes. Good answer there, right? So next, okay. So this again, a bag up for grabs, right? So this is again from the Constituent Assembly debates wherein in, while discussing the criminal jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, there were three different views, three views that were in favor of not including something, right? So, uh, Mr. Uh, Shiban Lal Saxena talked of his experience in the prison while he was serving a term, when he was in the Quit India Movement uh, protests and he was imprisoned. The treatment there kind of made him say that, you know, we should not go ahead with it. Uh, then you had... Dr. P.K. Sen, who spoke of how the British experience has been complex and tardy and uh, wild with a lot of human rights violations. So we should not take the British precedent. Dr. Ambedkar talked of how India should rely on its non-violent uh, historical tradition and that should become a moral mandate. So what are we talking about? Yeah, uh, somewhere at the back, somebody here, uh, Finalists, I'm, I'm going to restrain. Yeah, why don't you give her an answer? Third degree? Third degree punishment, you would say. Okay. Uh, something else? Yes. Lashing. Death penalty, capital punishment is what we were looking for. So, death penalty or capital punishment. So, if you have said death penalty, capital punishment, you would get your points. So this is capital punishment or death penalty. So many of our forefathers in the constitution, the founding fathers did not want capital punishment to be something that India would follow. So that's that. And the 17th question, this is asking a very old funda in new bottle many times, right? So yes, what do you think the answer for this is? EVMs is what we are looking for. So, Bharat Electronics Limited, the Bangalore based PSU, which makes the EVMs. So, of course, like I mean, many politicians have been being saying that, hey, these EVMs are, uh, there's something wrong about it whenever they don't get elected. But, yeah, that is the amount of people who would have voted and so on. So, this is the electronic voting machine. Okay, so this is an interesting video, in fact, a very rare footage of a very famous prisoner of war of the Vietnam War. Who are we talking about? Again, relevant and contextual for asking it now. Uh, anyone up? You, you, have you guys seen the video? I'll probably play a short version of the video so that you guys can... Hanoi. And I was bombing and was uh, hit by either missile or any aircraft fire. I'm not sure which. And the plane continued straight down. And I ejected 
and broke my leg and both arms and went into a lake, parachuted into a lake. And I was picked up by some North Vietnamese. Okay, so that's uh, which prisoner of war, famous prisoner of war are we talking about? Anyone up? You want to give out a, a clue is of course that this gentleman passed away recently and that's why it kind of figures in this quiz. Anyone else? Come on guys, give me some answers. Yeah, okay, yes? John McCain. That's the right answer, right? John McCain. So very famously was a prisoner of war at the Vietnam War and later as you all know was a presidential candidate, uh, at least the democratic presidential candidate uh, against Obama. Republican, sorry, yeah. John McCain was Republican uh, against Obama. So, John McCain recently passed away, right? So, next question, right? So, s the question reads this, reads as this. So, some in certain media, usually the ad slots for 10 seconds used to be in the range of 500 to 1500. Suddenly, after 2014 of a new show which came in into this media, so, ad slots started trailing with 2 lakhs for every 10 seconds. Which show are we talking about? Yeah? So, couple of hands going up here. Anyone up? No one want to take a crack? You have an answer? Take a guess. So, in 2014, a certain show sh started and it started really garnering this kind of pricing. Yes? Prime time with Arnav Goswami probably trails much. <laughs> Higher, <laughs> much higher, but uh, okay. So I'll probably give uh, uh, some students here a chance. Yes, you want to give it a shot? Yes. Okay, monkey bath is the correct answer. This is the Prime Minister's monkey bath in the All India Radio, right? So All India Radio did not have many, yeah. So many people using it, right? After this Sunday monkey bath that started. It started trailing with much more of uh, this one. So this is monkey bath. Okay, and this was more of a tribute question. A veteran from the south. So what are we talking about here? The clues here were that it was a 46 year old association of a certain commodity with a certain person. It was from Germany and he re replaced it only because the other one was lighter. So, what are we talking about? So, somebody who we have never seen uh, without them, or probably in my memory, right? Who are we talking about? Yes, you guys want to? Karuna Nadi's dark spectacles is what we were looking for. So, the Kalagnar or Karuna Nadi, if you have written Karuna Nadi, Karuna Nadi's dark glasses, or any reference to that, we would give you points. So, that's Karuna Nadi's dark glasses. And of course, Kalangar passed away recently. So guys, we'll be back with exactly another 10 minutes with the results. So hope you guys enjoyed the preliminary round and we'll have our finals following shortly. Thank you.